Hey, what's going on everybody? Well, before we get into today's video, I wanted to stop and just say something. First off, if you are new to my channel, my name is Chris and this is the Christopher Scott channel and, well, I like to keep fish and other types of animals. One of the other things I like to do is I like to do giveaways at all the major milestones of subscribers. So, at 10,000 subscribers, I gave away five separate fish tanks and now that we are this close, literally this close, to 20,000 subscribers, it's time for another giveaway. Before we talk about that, I just want to say that I am truly grateful. I'm so appreciative and so thankful for all of your support. At 20,000 subscribers, we are going to do another giveaway. So what I need you to do is I need you to comment below and let me know, what do you think we should give away during this 20,000 subscriber giveaway? I'll be releasing the details of that very soon. It's just like right around the corner. So obtainable to hit 20,000 subscribers. I never thought I would be able to do this in such a short amount of time, but I am truly grateful. So thank you very much and make sure you comment so your voice is heard on what we should give away for this 20,000 subscriber giveaway. Let's get into today's video. What's going on everybody? Well we are back for another video today and today's video is really going to be focused on the saltwater tank. So we did some major maintenance to it and if you see right here it has been cleaned. There's a little bit of algae in the sand. We're going to pick up an algae eating snail for that but we really want to get the water tested today. So we're going to head over to Aqua Studios and we are going to get a water test done. We're going to pick up some salt water because it does need a water change at the moment. So let's see what's going on. All right, guys. Well, we are back from Aqua Studios. And essentially what we found is our salinity is perfect. Our calcium is perfect. Our alkalinity is a little bit high and our nitrates are a little bit high, both of which can hopefully be corrected with a water change, which is needed anyway. So we went in and picked up some water. So let's get in here and do a water change. All right, well, we have the first five gallons removed from the tank. Let's get the next five gallons out. All right, well, we have the water out. We're gonna do a little maintenance on this thing. There's still a little more algae up in the corners and things we're gonna clean the glass, things of that nature, and then we'll get this water back in there. Well, the tank is now crystal clear, and uh, yeah, we gotta get the refrock back in, which is right here. That will go back in tomorrow when we pick up our new snail and coral. 24 hours later. All right, guys, well, we're back in here and you can see that the tank is crystal clear as I showed you yesterday. And we are gonna get this reef rock back in here, go pick up our snail, get our piece of coral and get this thing set back up. But before we do all that, we need to do one final water test, which we're gonna go have done now. And if everything comes back okay, well, we're gonna be adding to the salt water. So now that the water is tested and good, Corey says that nothing's gonna die in here. All right, so we're picking up a white banded trochus snail. Take care of our algae. All right, so we're gonna take a conch. We have a white banded trochus, a platygyra, and some zinc. So we're getting our saltwater tank all kinds of set up. Later. All right, guys, well, we are back at the house and <laughs> I had to put a night crew light on the top of this saltwater tank because while I was cleaning the tank out yesterday, this really fancy, expensive reef light fell into the water came unhitched and fell under the water. Uh, it was not plugged in at the time, so I set it outside to dry and unfortunately it's fried. So I'm gonna have to order a new one. But for the meantime, this gives enough light. It also has blue on it, so hopefully that'll help with what we're about to put in here. Now, what are we about to put in here? To start, we have a conch. And what is this conch gonna do? That conch is gonna take care of sifting the sand and getting the algae out of the sand. A very good animal to have for sand sifting capabilities. The next thing is a white banded trogus snail, which is a algae eating snail who will eat all the algae off the rocks and things of that nature. We also have a platygyra coral which you can see right there, Max picked that out. Doesn't look too colorful under the white light, but hopefully the blue light helps that. And finally, we have some Xenia coral. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set and let these guys temperature acclimate for just a minute, and then we will get these guys in there. And first things first, we're gonna drop this conch right down in there. We're gonna go ahead and put the white banded Troga snail, just like right up here on the rock, since he likes to be on the rock, we'll just go ahead and get him there. Oh, there's the meat eating snail. He just emerged, don't know what he's looking looking for food I guess so the white banded trochus is in there we actually change where that platy jar is gonna go and that guy is gonna go right there oh look that little snail's already moving around so we have the little platy gyra we have the xenia coral 
we have the conch, we have the little white banded troga snail, and basically the reason I went with these types of corals and snails is because I've never actually maintained a reef tank before. Uh, I've had this tank for a while, the clownfish are good, the meat eating snail's good, I needed something to clean the algae and keep that under control. I did a full water change, completely changed out all the substrate, changed out all of the filter media and everything, got this thing perfect. The water conditions are now perfect and we're gonna keep it that way. We're gonna continue to add coral to this tank and yeah turn this thing into just a coral haven I guess if you will so stay tuned for all of that but hopefully you enjoyed what I got today I think it's really kind of cool and um, it's good for beginners I really respect the opinions of those guys at aqua studios and this was the recommendation so let's see how this goes but hopefully you guys like this stuff all right well now let's take a look at all the fish that we have around and take a little tour oh also we put up a curtain in here now granted, you can still see a lot of light coming through here, but overall in the room, and it's full daylight outside, it is nice and darker in here, which is a good thing. Keep the algae out of here, but we may actually take this back and get the darker one. This one blocks 80% of UV, we'll get the one that blocks 95% of UV. But overall, this thing looks fantastic. Let's take a look at all the tanks. We have the Molly tank, slash Guppy tank, and what we see here is we've got a bunch of neon tetras in here that'll go back in the black water tank we have some guppies some mollies there is a yo-yo loach right there but the black water tank will come back to right here and all those fish will be relocated back into it that go in there once we rescape it moving down to the turtle tank just did a water change on everything there's the little pink belly side neck right there elon the musk turtle back there there's a clown pleco in here and some neon tetras they're all looking good moving down here here's the big old blue betta the glass on this tank is really kind of bad i need to clean this even better he's doing really well and then all the rescue bettas they're all doing well and we just did a water change on these guys and they're all happy we got the indoor pond and everything is up under the rocks at the moment let's see if we can get this stuff out there's the knife fish and the pleco and where are the oscars oh back there behind the waterfall but everything in here is looking good obviously we've seen this all oh look there's a little meat eating snail he's out must be looking for food but everything in here is looking good coming in here we have the hundred gallon there's all the angel fish the pleco the ballast shark all the cory catfish the serpe and buenos aires tetra but everything in the hundred gallon is looking good there's the black ghost knife fish he's sticking his head out and the pike oh there's the pike right there He's looking good. The Rasbora tank. I mean, these guys are living their best life. There goes a yo-yo loach, which took care of all my pest snails in here. Got the Cory catfish in here. Everything in here is looking good. Got the Jade goby. He's looking good. Probably going to relocate him at some point to a bigger tank and then take this tank and use it for something else. We have the guppy tanks. And the guppies are looking fantastic. As you can see, there are tons of fry in this tank. But yeah, everything in here is looking good. And then we have these two guys over here. I put these plants in here to get some light to start some growth. And if you know, Notice we have a crypt here that's starting to get some green on it. We have a whole bunch of growth on this Anubius, some red rotala that's starting to grow again. We got some val that's uh, started to melt at the end, so I got that in here. This was actually all in the pike tank. We have another crypt here that's really starting to look. This one's actually branched off and is now two different pods, which is good. We have some hornwort that's starting to pick up and grow again. So the plant growth in this tank is actually really, really good. Oh look, here's another little crypt that's starting to grow, if you can see that. But everything in this tank is looking good as well. Coming back here, the backyard pond's looking good. There's a little algae growth on the rocks, but that's okay. At least the water is now clear. So all the algae, you know, just the standard kind of algae bloom you get in an outdoor pond when you first put it in, that's been taken care of. Now I will tell you something though. This thing gets really hot during the day, like the water temperature. So I have a solution for that. So so do you have a problem with your outdoor pond getting really hot to the point where you really need to cool the water down? Well, if you do, stay tuned because there's a video coming out where I'm going to do a DIY pond chiller. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And if we look right here, nice big old common pleco. He's doing really well. I won't show you much, but we have made progress on the chicken coop. Stay tuned because that video will be coming too. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video today and hopefully you are enjoying the content. If you've yet to subscribe or you've yet to like this video, please do that now. Also, make sure you give me a follow on Instagram. We're almost at 3,000, which is amazing. Thank you very much. And if you have any video ideas or suggestions, make sure that you send me an email or DM me or comment below and let me know. But with that, hopefully, like I said, you guys have enjoyed this video and hey, we'll see you next time.